This is my 93 uh, S10. It's got a 434 small block Chevy in it with a uh, solid valve train. Uh, so obviously I have to set the lash on uh, the valves here. And this is the uh, first time on this engine that I'm having to do it. I haven't checked them yet. I don't know what they're gonna be at. I know what they're supposed to be set at. And that's uh, four thousandths cold valve lash uh, every motor you know is different as far as you know what the cam calls for some of it calls for uh, the valve lash to be set hot and uh, this specific cam is to be set at four thousandths cold there's a few things you'll need to do if you're trying to do this and I always get me a piece of paper and draw out each and every one of my uh, roller rockers and label them intake exhaust accordingly. And you can tell that if you look at the engine here, this roller lifter is directly above an exhaust uh, pipe. So that would be an exhaust valve. This lifter is directly below an intake port so that would be the intake side and on a small block Chevy it goes exhaust intake intake exhaust exhaust intake intake exhaust simple enough um, the method that I use since this engine's got a pretty radical cam the method that I use to adjust the valves is called EOIC Exhaust opening, intake closing. And I'll show more on that in just a second. Um, if you want to get really technical about the torque specs and everything, um, I've got it wrote down right here. And that's 20 foot pounds on this outer adjusted nut. The tools you'll need to do this, the tools I use anyway, uh, I use this here to turn the crank over and it's a 5 8 uh, socket with a little extension on it um, this is a 7 32nd um, allen key on a ratchet you can use just a regular allen key if you want to and that is to loosen and tighten the poly locks uh, and then a, a, a 5 in, 5 8 inch wrench and that is to uh, turn the actual adjusting nut outside there now since uh these valves are to be set at four thousandths cold what i like to do is get a feeler gauge that i don't know if you can see that yeah that is just a tad bit bigger in this instance it's a uh, one thousandths inch bigger and then i'll get obviously the one that i want it set at and the reason I do that, I'll show you here in just a minute why I do that. Some people have um, trouble on what it should feel like to get the proper lash set and uh, say it like four thousandths. I've always heard that it should feel like uh, a butter knife going through cold butter. It's kind of hard for some people to, to get the feel of that. Uh, so I'll show you a, a fail safe way of, of doing that. So now to begin adjusting valves, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put the 5 8 uh, ratchet set up that I have with the little extension on the center bolt of my crank pulley at the very bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. I also should say that um, in order to do it this way, you need to have... Um, all of your spark plugs removed 
That way the engine is not building compression and it's, it's easier to turn. It actually makes it possible to turn. So remove the spark plugs first before doing this. This is the most accurate way to set the valve lash on uh, an engine with a radical cam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the engine over and watch the number one cylinder rocker arms. It may take a second before one of them start to move because I was at top dead center. Alright, there we go. Now, that was the exhaust side. You go back and look at your paper. The, according to the EOIC method, just as the exhaust is opening, you should be able to adjust the intake valve. So, we can take our feeler gauge, take my four thousandths feeler gauge, and check the lash on this one. And it's actually a little tight. No, nope. that's that's my point proven right there. It's, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of drag you should be getting. But uh, like I said, the fail safe way of, of seeing if you're as close as you possibly can be on the lash is that was the 4,000th feeler gauge that I just stuck in there. Well now, and I know it's not going to fit, but if I was on the fence about whether or not I was at the right lash, I would take the next size up feeler gauge, this 5,000th feeler gauge, and try to stick it in there. And I can tell you right now that there is no way that that will fit. Okay. But if the valve lash was off for, for whatever reason, if it's worked its way loose, what you do is you take your your Allen set up here, your Allen key, set it on loosen, and you'll just crack this uh, poly lock nut loose, like so. Okay, so now if I take my four thousandths. It fits loosely. Okay, well if I didn't know that uh, that was loose, I could take my five thousandths and try to slide it in. And it slides in. So I know at that point that my valve lash is too loose. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to adjust this, Here's the setup I've got. I've got my 5 8 on the adjusting nut, and I've got my Allen key in the uh, poly lock. I put my 4 thousandths feeler gauge in between the roller rocker and the uh, valve tip, and I've got it sideways like this because the ends on mine are just, they're, they're kind of mangled up a little, and I feel like this is more accurate. So, to actually adjust it, what you do, my poly lock is already loose. So I'm going to take and just slightly move the lock nut and then tighten the poly lock. Okay, now. So, to me, that feels pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and check myself um, by taking the five thousandths and trying to slide it in. And there is absolutely no way 
that that's going to go in there. So let's go ahead and make sure our lock nut doesn't move and tighten the poly lock. Okay, now let's recheck ourselves. Four thousandths goes in. Five thousandths will not. So I'm at four thousandths valve lash. So I just um, adjusted the intake valve. So let me come back here to my paper. And I've got it marked. So that this is the front of the vehicle. This is the firewall. Passenger side and driver's side. Here's the number one cylinder. These two here. One, two. You got exhaust intake. Well we just we just uh adjusted the intake side, so just check it off. That one's done. So since we've got the uh, the intake valve adjusted, we can go ahead and go back down here to our um, to our crank and turn it clockwise again. And we just watch until this exhaust valve here until it opens all the way. And then it'll start closing again. Now our intake valve is going to open all the way and then it's going to start to close. Okay, so it's not fully closed but it was on its way back up. It's pretty close. So now this rocker is loose and it can be adjusted and that is the exhaust uh, rocker on the number one cylinder now that we've got this set up um, and we're ready to adjust the exhaust valve do the same thing well first off we should check it four thousandths Feels a little loose to me. Let's try five thousand. So yes, it is loose. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our four thousand filler gauge back in there. Take our Allen key. Loosen the po uh, poly lock. Five eighths. And just give it a little bit of a turn. There we go. Tighten the poly lock. Oh, that feels good to me. Let's try our five thousandths. and it will not go through. So that one's adjusted. Number one cylinder is now done. You will repeat this process um, all the way through the firing order uh, and, and, and you'll adjust one single cylinder at a time. And this is the most accurate way of doing it with a big cam to ensure that you are on the heel of the cam, on the base circle of the cam. You do not want any kind of lift um, on or preload on the valve train that the, the valve that you're adjusting. I should say, you want no preload on it at all because you will it will give you an inaccurate reading. So if if you do it this way, 
you know for sure that you're doing it right. I went ahead and wrote down the, the firing order, 18436572, and the way that the, the engine fires. So doing it this way will ensure that you have to turn the crank the least amount of times and doing the uh, EOIC uh, method. So I went ahead and turned the crank and it didn't take very much at all. My next firing order uh, is gonna be cylinder number eight. This valve right here was already all the way down. And I just turned it uh, just a little bit and it started coming on its way back up. Well, if you look here, that's an intake valve. And what do we say on our paper over here? Exhaust opening, intake closing. And that is exactly what's going on here. This intake valve is starting to close. So we can adjust the exhaust valve on cylinder number eight. <laughs> 